Hey, this is Stefan from ProjectLifeMastery.com. Today I'm really excited to be bringing you an interview with someone I've looked up to for a long time. His name's Gary Ryan Blair, also known as The Goals Guy, and he's the number one best-selling author and creator of The 100-Day Challenge. And as some of you may or may not know, I'm a huge advocate of Gary's 100-Day Challenge and, per and personally participate in it every single year. It actually changed my life about three or four years ago when I first heard about it. And at the time, I was struggling financially, living in my friend's living room trying to find a way to survive and I ended up joining this 100 day challenge uh, set some goals for an internet business that I was starting at the time and I was able to achieve them because of Gary and this program you know fast forward now I've made literally hundreds of thousands of dollars online and I also want to mention that I actually ended up creating a mastermind group out of this program I have four friends that we all decided to do the 100 day challenge together about two years ago and we formed a mastermind group where we meet every single morning uh, or every Monday morning at 8 a.m. from the exact format that Gary has taught us. So you can tell I'm excited. Um, I just want to thank you, Gary, for personally making a huge difference in my life and for taking the time to talk to me today. And I want to welcome you to the interview. Man, I, I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Stephen. Awesome. So uh, my first question is, is, could you tell people a little bit of background about yourself and how you got into doing what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I, I've been fortunate enough to grow up in an entrepreneurial family, so uh, yeah, I, I learned, I guess you could say, some life skills of self-reliance and making money real early. But I went to uh, I went to college in, uh, in upstate New York, Syracuse University, thinking I was going to play pro ball. That's what I wanted to do. That didn't work out, just a physical injury. But uh, the, the, the good side of the bright side of that is it really forced me to, to look at what my future was going to be from a really from an income, from a contribution standpoint, and I started, while I was in school, I started the first long-distance phone business that was focused in on the collegiate market. So essentially, this is the time going back in the early 80s when AT&T split up, MTI, and just a, a thousand and one different interconnect companies are out there, and I, I had a very unique uh, focus, if you will, and at, at the time, I was the only one in the game that was doing it. And over the course of about four and a half years, um, we, I, I knew I had a short-term window, but I sprinted really across the U.S., built this up, and then flipped it to, uh, to MCI in my early 20s and was very fortunate to find myself in a comfortable financial position. It didn't rest on my laurels. You know, there were a number of other businesses I've been involved with. Um, and, you know, so much of it really has come down to, if I were to see where my greatest skill sets are, it's really being able to focus, to understand exactly what the key end target is, but more importantly, is just solid, fast, relentless execution. Mm -hmm. And as, as time had gone on, goal setting just seemed to me is that it, it was something that was universal. And not, not just that it's a universal principle that you know, people need to achieve something, but the fact is it was applicable to everybody, uh, regardless of, of gender, regardless of religious beliefs, regardless of skin color, it didn't matter. Everybody, anywhere, you know, needed to have some type of guidance and direction. And while everybody talked about this subject matter, nobody in my sector, if you will, from the standpoint of whether it's Brian Tracy or, uh, or Tony Robbins, whoever else out there, everyone kind of you know, has, has touched on the subject, but no one's really built an entire business model around goals, goal setting, execution. And that's really what I've done. And it's been a good run. It's been a real good run the last couple of years. Oh, that's awesome. So as you know, New Year's is coming, uh, coming about right around the corner, and uh, you know, people are getting ready to make their New Year's resolutions and everything. Could you tell us a little bit about New Year's resolutions and what the history is of that? Yeah, it, it's actually kind of a superstitious thing. It, it goes back, obviously, to Roman ages, which shouldn't surprise anybody, but Janus, who is a mythical god, was depicted with two heads. And one head essentially pointed towards the past. In this case, you could, metaphorically speaking, saying it was last year. And the other head pointed towards the new year, towards what was about to come. And the, the Roman soldiers actually used Janus, this mythical god, as, uh, as an opportunity for us for forgiveness for their sins in the past and for guidance and direction and for, for hope in the future. And that's really the, uh, really the, the story behind it. Oh, cool. And why do you think... Um you know, people should be taking their resolutions and goals more seriously? <laughs> you know, it's a great question. Um, well, I, I kind of compare this to your, to, your heart, to your heart rate, you know, mm -hmm. that how important is it? And, and the fact is we all know that we are toast, roadkill, history. You, you, you pick the adjective, but bottom line is, you know, it's game over. And the same thing is true with your goals. That's what provides you with direction, with meaning, with significance. It allows you to determine if you are, are, are making a contribution to society and doing anything with your life. But bottom line is, is that, 
you, you know, you need to wake up with some type of idea as to what it is you are trying to do and get done. Mm-hmm. And that's that really is a lot, very large reason as to why this is so important. Right. Why do you why do you think it is that you know? New Year's, it's a very exciting time for people because, you know, they set the resolutions, goals. It's like a new a new year. Why do you think people, you know, they set the goals, they're so excited. Maybe they get a little bit of progress at the beginning. You know, for example, people join the gym and they're in the gym for the first three weeks of January. Then as time goes on, they just kind of, they don't stick with that, that goal or that resolution that they committed to. Why do you think that happens? You know, there's a couple of different rabbit holes that can go down, and I think it's worth try to check out a few, but let's let's look at this from a, rather than from a kind of a micro focus, let's look at it as it relates towards a societal issue, meaning that most people grow up to be financially literate. Their parents didn't teach them about, you know, financial, how to how to create a budget, how to spend their money, how to invest it, because largely they didn't know themselves. Mm-hmm. Most people are, from a standpoint of being nutritionally illiterate, they don't know a darn thing about really what's going on in their body as it relates to the food. And this, this goes on to so many different areas of your life. When it comes to goal setting, this is a tremendous life skill. Your ability to, to effectuate a result, to create something out of nothing, is, is an important skill set. And unfortunately, most people are not taught it, or if they are, they're taught it improperly. So that's one issue. The other is, is really comes down to this, is, you know, there's, there's a couple of components. There's what you want, which is what is the resolution. There is why do you want it, what's the, the motivational fuel, and there's the how you're going to get it. Well, the, 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 the two easy parts really are the what and the how. I mean, that's pretty easy to identify. What, what are the steps? What do you need to eat? How much exercise do you need to engage? It's pretty simple to put the plan in. Mm-hmm. The challenge that people have is, is the why. So let's equate that, metaphorically speaking. You know, if, if you have a, a, a phone and your battery runs down, that phone is functionally useless. If you have a, an automobile and you run out of gas, again, it is from a utilitarian value. It has, it, it's not going to take you anywhere. It's just the way that it goes. If you have a goal or a resolution, you don't have a burning enough desire, strong enough why, some sustainable fuel, you're going to conk out, give up, suck your thumb, and cry uncle as soon as you run into an obstacle, as soon as you experience failure, as soon as you experience any sense of, of difficulty, you're, you're, you're more than likely to quit than you are to fight through it. And it's so important to realize that you need all three of those elements. You need to know exactly what it is you want. You really need to spend a lot of time thinking through what's the motivational horsepower that's going to drive this engine and how and how and when you're going to refuel it. And then obviously, you've got to execute properly. And, and that's a whole other issue, too, that people have an issue with execution, I'm sure we'll discuss. Yeah, that's great. And I didn't even add to that just the accountability side of things because I think that's one thing that your program really accomplishes is that it, you know, having a system that people in place that just holds you accountable every single day to make sure that you're executing and performing at a high level. And I think, you know, people, maybe they're accountable in their job because, you know, if, if they don't go to job today or go to the work today, they're going to get fired or something like that because they're, they have a boss that's holding them accountable. So do you have any thoughts just on the accountability side of things? I do. And, and I think it's worthwhile to give kind of a painful example uh, mm-hmm. to drive this point home. But let's look at it this way. When I built this program, I, I do everything. The way I frame out a speech or a report, or in this case, this program, is I always begin with questions. What does it take in order to achieve a goal? What, is it, what does it take in order to achieve a goal fast? What does, it achieve, what, it do, what does it take in order to create a quantum leap in your life consistently? And I think you need to ask bigger, expanding, bolding questions. The opposite is also true. You need to ask yourself, why does failure take place? Why does it, why does it take place consistently, consistently in people's lives? What's the, the missing clues? And, and I think one of the best ways to determine the, the answers for the, for, the, for the former, for the how do you get what you want, is you have to identify the latter. You have to look at the adverse effects of failure and why does it take place. So accountability is the issue. So let me give you a stat. Mm-hmm. I could, right now, I can only speak about the states here in the United States, but we're well past the point in time where we're close to 58% of all first marriages end in divorce. Mm -hmm. Now, let's stick with that for a second. You mosey on over to second divorces, and you'll realize that that is close to 70% in terms of second divorces. Third divorces are off off the charts. 80% of third divorces plus end in divorce. Now, just stop and think about this for a minute. If the single biggest commitment you can make to a human being is till death do us part, that I will stick with you, that this is you are my partner for life. 
and that the vast majority of people in society break the single largest commitment you could ever make to another human being during the course of your lifetime. Do you think it's possible that people could quit when there's a temptation, when a cupcake comes around, that they'll quit when things get difficult, that they won't follow through on their promises or goals or commitments when uh, some type of adversity takes place? And the fact is, is that you become, you, you, the more that you quit, the more that you give up, the more that you, you don't enforce accountability and deadlines and execution, you, you weaken your psychological immune system. Mm. So you become much more suspect. And this is why this whole issue of accountability, that is the problem. It is the number one problem. It needs to be isolated and discussed, and people need to shine a flashlight to their soul and say, how am I going to solve this? And a large part of that is, is what I built into the challenge, a series of hyper-accountability systems. Mm, that's awesome. So, you know, just for, you know, year 2014 is coming up, how can we use 2013 or the last year's performance as a guide to making our goals for the new year? Well, the single smartest thing that you can do is, is, to, ref is to stop and reflect and ask mm. yourself some real simple questions. How well did I perform? Uh, and you need to look at your results. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, the, the, the results are a representation of your beliefs, the representation of all of your actions, the representation of everything that you spoke or written word, whatever it is. The bottom line is we are all a summation of what we think, say, and do. And if you're off target, you have to, you have to become an adult. You've got to wake up, grow up, and make a decision that, you know what, that if I continue to perpetuate exactly what I did last year, is there even a likelihood, a possibility, a whiff that I will improve my situation in 2014? The answer is absolutely not. Right. And you've got to make some changes. But the only way that's going to take place is for the individual, truly, again, to, to, to look and, and have a truthful, honest, adult conversation with themselves and, and, and say, what do I need to change in order to get better results? Mm. And it's that simple, it's that profound, and it's that difficult. But that's really what the answer is. That's awesome, yeah. And why is it important for all of us to start the year fast, you know, focused and fired up? Real simple. Um, you know, a lot of people start slow, and unfortunately they don't build any momentum. Right. Now, I, when I designed this program, you know the theme of this is start fast and finish strong. Right. And where some of my motivation for that was, was that when you – there was a commercial that, it got, that, was in, that was running decades ago, and it was a recruitment uh, ad about for the Army. And it said, you know, join the Army. We get more done by 7 a.m. than most people do all day. And it's a true statement. And, and I do. I mean, that's the way I live my life as well. I'm, I mean, up, I'm up and running, and I get my more stuff done probably by 7 or 8 o'clock than most people do. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, you want to start fast because you want to build momentum in the day early. You want to quit. You want to get wins quickly. And, and the reason for that is it, it's almost like a natural drug, and it really is. It is a natural drug. It's an endorphin. And when you start, start the year off fast, the same principle applies. You're building momentum, and off you go. If you start slow, the fact of the matter is you're not building any momentum. You don't have a full head of steam. You don't have a series of successes out of the gate that would, one, inspire other people. Mm -hmm. Number two, set precedent for yourself with which to be able to build upon and there's a whole host of others, but I think those are probably the dominant ones. Okay, cool. Um, I've heard you talk about closing performance gaps. Can you explain what you mean and maybe go into a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's very simple. It's, it's understanding the difference between your desired outcome and your mm -hmm. actual outcome. There's always going to be a gap. For some, it's going to be larger or smaller, but that's just kind of the way it goes. And some people are able to close those gaps. But essentially, what you need to be able to do is sit back and uh, here's a great example. Let's say it's paying off debt. Mm -hmm. Your objective 2013 was to pay off $20,000 in debt. At this point in time, you know, with whatever's, whatever time is left, you've only paid off, let's just arbitrarily say, 14000 